stand together and worship and invite him into this place. We're here to worship him, give him attention and praise today. Can you hear me? All right. We're going we're gonna to get into worship this morning. Ready? so many not to even come today uh, because of, we understand their situations. But we want to say thank you to all you that brave to come out and to be with us today. And we believe that God's going to cover you and keep you. Amen. And uh, we just believe that. But we are so happy you're here. And some people said to me all this week, are you afraid? Are you afraid? I said, well, 
you know what? I lived in Africa 22 years. I had seven funerals in one day through a cholera epidemic. And I said, I was taking one little child to the hospital at about one o'clock in the morning and he vomited all over me. He had cholera. Thank God he lived. We got him there in time. And I said, I've seen a lot of things and I've been around a lot of things and a lot worse than th this virus that's attacked our nation and I, around the world too. And I says, you know, through it all, God has kept me and I believe he's gonna continue to keep me until it's all over. And I got news for you, if I die from the coronavirus, you'll know that it was my time. Hallelujah, it was my time. And uh, do I believe that's gonna happen? No, but it's all in the hand of God. And that's why I've lived my life all these years. I'm not foolish and I wanna be wise, but at the same time, I do not live in fear. He's not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. Yeah. And so he wants us to use our mind and be careful, not stupid. That's why we have sanitizer out there to sanitize your hands. We ask you not to hug, but you can shake hands because you're sanitized, hallelujah, and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Huh? What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sanitized. Did you sanitize your hands? I haven't touched anybody. Oh, my. So I can't go through life like that. I'm kind of like President Trump in my position. I just got to shake hands. I was at a funeral on Friday. Man, we shook hands with about, man, I don't know how many pastors and friends we hadn't seen in years. And uh, not that we're foolish. We try to be wise. But... Uh, I know that also my life is in the hand of God. Amen. And I praise the Lord for that. But because of this, we want to use wisdom. And we know that we heard, heard last night that there's one case in Madison County. Uh, the first case has come here. That's what we've heard. I'm not positive. Not had that confirmed. But we do know that uh, it's, it's coming. It's inevitable that we'll probably have some cases here. So we want to be wise. And so over the next few weeks, as we're watching everything, we're going to change things around here a little bit. Uh, also, the, first of all, let me say that there'll be no, no nursing home services for this month and probably next month. They've got everything shut down in the nursing homes, and so we've been asked not to come. Uh, then the men's conference that's coming up in April has been canceled over in Springfield, so we won't be going to that. Uh, then also, uh, we're going to cancel Friends Sunday. A, a potluck that we have after church. We thought no use just bringing that in. And uh, also we stopped busing the kids in because we felt that uh, sometimes parents are not wise and they bring their children or the kids come with colds and, and all kinds of issues and, and don't use their wisdom at all. They can even come with fevers, very sick. And so we thought to to, if they find a way and come that way, fine, but we're not going to bust it in because it was too hard to control. So for the next uh, couple of weeks, at least, maybe longer, we'll see how this goes. We do want to use wisdom, but at the same time, I don't want to live in fear. We are here, and we thank the Lord for that. Um, I will say, I was going to cancel prayer meeting for tonight, and Lord dealt with me very severely this morning. Uh, dealt with me very, very severely while I was preparing my sermon and finishing up the touches on it. And uh, God just told me, hey, hey, if there's ever a time you should be praying, it's now. And so the church will be open tonight for prayer. And uh, I will be here. We'll have music playing. And we want you to come and pray for our country and for the world and for this virus and what's attacking us and for our families and, uh, and uh, the, our, our nursing homes and the situations that are going on around the world, not just here in America, but around the world. Pray for China, pray for, for Russia, pray for uh, Iran. Let's pray. Do you know that the fastest growing church in the world is in Iran? And so pray uh, for Iran and the needs of this world. And so we're just going to go around the world praying uh, for the, 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 the protection in the hand of God and the Lord to use this situation as a means to uh, get people's attention. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Guess what happened to the stock market? Woo! Down! 20. Oh, no, did it go back up a little bit? I've just been watching it go down, 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 down. I just love that. I say, boy, hallelujah. That shakes people. Nothing else shakes them. You know, they'd rather die than lose 25% of their, of their uh, life savings. See, well, if I lost 25% of mine, I wouldn't be losing a whole lot. <laughs> but that's not where my hope is at. 
My hope is in the Lord. Amen? And yeah, these things happen and they shake this world, but they shouldn't shake us as the saints of God. They should not. Amen? Amen? Amen. I didn't lose an ounce of sleep over it, and I won't. Pastor. Hallelujah. Well, it's getting awful quiet in here. I better be cave myself. Brother Roy. I'm, I'm checking else, something else. Yes. <laughs> uh, the ladies will also not have anything until um, I think May 2nd is our next meeting. We're not going to the movie tonight. We're not going to have our defense. We're going to postpone all of that in light of, of the situation. Yes, amen. Marlene. Okay, Wednesdays, what I, this is again something that happened just this morning. Uh, I felt in my heart that we should still have church. We're not going to bust in the kids, but we're going to have prayer on Wednesday. Those who want to come and pray on Wednesday, the church will be open and we will be spending um, time in prayer on Wednesday, praying for our country. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and what? Heal their land. Isn't that very appropriate? The Lord spoke that to my heart. Then I came in. All this happened uh, this morning early, about five o'clock this morning, as I was dealing and preparing and in prayer and waiting before the Lord, and actually with tears of gratefulness to God. And you'll see why as I end my, I'll finish my sermon uh, this week, you'll, uh, this uh, Sunday. You'll see why I was in tears of thankfulness and gratefulness to God when God spoke these things to my heart. Then I came in and I opened my phone up just to look at the, the latest news to see where the coronavirus was set and everything. And the first thing that popped up was President Trump has called February, uh, March 15th to be a national day of prayer. And boy, I just, my heart leaped inside me. I thought, God, this is of you and we're going to pray. If no other church does, we're going to pray. We're going to meet to pray. We're not meeting to hug and shake hands or anything like that. We're just going to come and pray and seek the Lord. Amen. And uh, John had one first that he gave to me this morning that the Lord gave to him this week. It says, come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. That's in Isaiah 26, 20. And I believe that's a word from the Lord. We need to hide ourselves, not only in the church, but also in our homes, in our quiet uh, chambers and seek the Lord in this hour. And that God would use this to wake people up to realize our life is in the hand of the Lord. Our nation is, our economy, everything that we have in this world is in the hand of God. And he can take it away from us in just a matter of moments. And this country doesn't know what they would do without their toilet tissue, without their water, without these crazy things that make them go nuts. I look at America and I think, God, how fickle and how foolish we are. We're more concerned about that than we are souls and eternity and heaven and hell. And God wake up our nation and wake up our hearts to realize that God can use this situation as, as a situation to get people's attention. And I got news for you too. Something else I got to announce. I, all this has just been coming, but I got a, a phone call yesterday saying that our DVDs are coming tomorrow. And we were praying just last week that we'd get them within three weeks and they're coming tomorrow and they're gonna be delivered here. We gotta start working on packing them up, getting them up. We're gonna visit every home in this, 4,500 of them. We're gonna visit every home, pop them on the doors and let people know there's a Jesus, hallelujah. And we hope when they open that door and they're thinking of death, death and they're thinking of the virus and they're thinking of all these fearful things that the first thing they're going to see that morning is going to be a film about Jesus. And just maybe God's going to use this crisis to open up the hearts of some people. And so tonight we're going to be praying for the, uh, the DVDs that are going to be passing out and that God, they would touch the hearts of everyone that receives them, and that we would see a move of God, that people would turn back to the Lord, and good things would happen for His glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're so happy to have Rose with us, and she couldn't come alone. She had to bring three of her friends with her. Hallelujah. 
And uh, she says, I know the rest of the world is scared to death, but not Brother Roy and Sister Roy. They're not worried about this stuff. You can come home with us. Hallelujah. And uh, we'll put you in a home. And so I'm going to let you introduce your friends, even though I do remember their names, but I'm going to let you introduce them, Rose. Come on up and introduce your friends. We're so happy from the Bible school there. And they're going to be helping us this week or two weeks. We don't know how long they'll be with us. And uh, we got a lot of work to do. And I thought, boy, God's already sending us recruits. <laughs> It's really awesome to be home, um, but like you said, I couldn't come alone, so I brought some of my really close friends with me. Our break got extended by a week, so we're going to be here for two weeks, and so that's going to be really awesome. Um, right out here is Angela. She's really awesome. And then on stage here, I was like, ooh, they can sing. Mom, get them on stage. <laughs> and so this is Michaela right here. And then some of you guys may have met Kate before. I brought her to the chili dump. So if you met her there, that's where you know her from. But this is Miss Kate. <laughs> yes, and that's my mom. She's amazing. <laughs> and everyone else is awesome too. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, we're really excited to be here. You know, they all go to the James River College with me. And it's just going to be an awesome time getting to, you know, serve home. But also, I kind of wanted to talk about you're talking about passing out those tracks. That's so important, because I was almost weeping in my seat, because I mean, honestly, like, that's how they found me. Like, I was a person who, far away from the Lord, you know, like family living in poverty, and then you guys brought bread to my house and like <laughs> knocked on my door, and you know, like, now I'm here, and it's like, that's only the Lord, and so I know that like doing this, like if you can sign up, if you can help, if you can be there, be there because it's not about passing out tracks it's about a potential life being saved and being changed and like that can happen like through you doing door door ministry so get it get a hold of that and like be here with like pastor roy but we're excited to be here <laughs> And uh, though we're few in number, we're still going to take up an offering. But before we do that, I want to pray for a few people um, that uh, they're not here today. And, and uh, uh, Tracy's not here because she's got a bad breathing problem. Some of our elderly folks are not here. Juanita, Sister Clay is not um, she, Not that people don't even know, but she's battling cancer. And she's as frail as can be. And I called her and told her, told Terry, actually, he was there at the house with her. Uh, that I didn't feel it would be wise for her to come. And she says, well, I'm, you got to know how she talks. Well, I'm ready to go anyways. I mean, well, I don't care. I said, well, talk her into using a little bit of wisdom and not being here today. And uh, so I didn't see her this morning, but she's a trooper and loves God so much. And, but uh, we asked those that were sickly and struggling with anything not to be here today. So we want to hold them up in prayer too. It's a fearful time when you, you don't have your good health. And then some of the children, uh, Tony's home with, with uh, Kaylee because she's uh, not, not feeling well. And, uh, and I appreciate the wisdom of not bringing the kids when they're not feeling well. You never know what will happen. So we want to protect the elderly and the sickly and the weak. And, and I, I called so many and I told them if they needed anything, they didn't need to be going out, Louise. I said, if you don't go out, you don't need to go out. Call me. We'll get things to you. You need groceries, whatever. How many would be willing to help me if I need some help to, to run errands for them? I already told them. I said, I don't know how long this is going to go on. You don't need to be out running around. So don't think you need to do that. We'll call them in, okay? And so we want to hold them up in prayer before the Lord. Also, Paul had a miracle. He was um, just a miracle this week. Uh, they, he had a heart come back and a report come back and said that his heart was shot and he wasn't even qualified for a surgery that he needs to do and uh, pretty much scared him to death. And, uh, but he, we had prayer at the house and prayed for Paul and believed God and he went back in for another EKG and test and Paul let you share what, what happened, what, what happened, just a good report. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> well, we've seen a few miracles in our life, haven't we, Ken? Yeah. You need to tell him your story. He's got a miracle. He had like three in a row, wham, 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 when he was diagnosed with cancer. So God can do anything. I'm telling you, it's not us. It's him, and he gets the glory. But boy, I tell you what, I love being in between. I love it when men things happen like that. You just, your heart's so lifted up. It's like, wow, God. And my heart's been lifted up. I got a, a wonderful message I want to share with you in just a little bit. It's almost all, all I can do to keep from preaching it and then take up the offering. But, uh, well, we want to pray uh, over these needs and also for Judy. Uh, that's Tracy's mom and her sister. They both are struggling with cancer. And they need God's help. Uh, her, her sisters really was in a lot, a lot of pain. And uh, we just need to hold them up before the Lord. They ask us to pray for them. Amen. And God's able to do anything, isn't he? So uh, and then we'll pray over the offering. And our ushers can come even to say, come, let's just lift these needs to the Lord in prayer. Father, we lift you up. We know that you're the God of the universe. And just with the spoken word, Lord you, Lord, you created everything. Everything. <laughs> just by your word. And we know by your finger, oh God, you can shake the worlds. You've done it with earthquakes and tornadoes. Lord, you've spun the wind. Hallelujah. And got our attention and let us know from time to time that you are God. In times of crisis, in times of when it seems like the earth is being shaken and our worlds are falling apart, God, it's in times like this that you're able to get people's attention. Let them know that you're the God that they must learn to depend on and look to, not just in the hour of crisis, but in everyday life to realize our life is in the hand of God and we need you. We need you like we've never needed you before, oh Lord, in this world that's just been rocked with sin and evil. I pray, oh God, you'd grab a hold of the attention of people, Lord, that have neglected you all of their life and that for once in their life they begin to realize there is a God in heaven. Lord, they would turn to you and find you as a loving, saving, wonderful God that cares about them more than they could ever imagine. And then, Lord, you do a work of grace throughout this world in saving and bringing people to Christ. And we'll bless you for it, Lord. And God, we lift up these that are weak and sickly. These that are going through struggles, Lord, we know that the fear of this virus can really shake the world, but Lord, let their confidence be in you. And I pray that you'd keep Judy and Lord, you'd keep Tracy's sister. Keep your hand upon them, Lord. Lord, I pray that in their weakness, they would look to you. And that, Lord, you would protect them and keep them in this hour of need. I pray you keep your hand upon Paul. Continue to strengthen him and help him, Lord. God, get him through every struggle, every battle he has. He learned to lean upon you, Lord. We pray for all our elderly ones. We think of Sister Clay and Juanita and Louise and Lord, others, God, that are, that are not here today. That God, you would just wrap your arms around them, let you feel them feel your comfort and your grace and your peace. Lord, a peace that passes all understanding. And God, we'll bless you for that. We'll bless you for that. We ask you to bless this offering, Lord. Let it meet the needs of this church, the ministries of the kingdom of God. And that, Lord, you would bless each one that can give and those that are struggling right now, that you'd bless them so that they could give more and more to the kingdom of God. And that, Lord, today, today, Lord, we would bring honor and glory and praise to you in this service, in your word, in the worship, in everything that happens today that God, your name would be lifted on high. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' wonderful name. And everyone said, amen, amen. God bless you. Could we all stand this morning? Had a good 30 minutes to just sit and listen. How many of you know that God is our wonderful, amazing God? He's our Savior, our Lord, our King, our Protector, our Provider. 
that in him we trust, in him we look to, in him we have confidence in, in him we can walk through every valley and every storm because he is the author and the finisher of our faith and he is worthy to be praised. No matter what season you find yourself in, he's worthy to be praised. So we're gonna say, God, we want you here today. We know that you're here, but we invite you into our hearts. We invite you into our lives and saying, just have your way. God, use us in this season and in this time to draw men to you. God, that they will know you, that their hearts be made right with you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, sweep through this place this morning. We're going to lift you high. We're going to give you all the praise and all the glory in this place. You're so worthy.
I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship. I worship you, you are here, and you're working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who
the shadows can't deny And your name, it'll not be overcome Your name is alive, it's forever lifted high And your name cannot be overcome And your name is alive Shadows can't deny, and your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a lie, it's forever lifted high, and your name it cannot be overcome. Oh, your name is a lie. Shadows can't deny like this this morning there is healing and it's in the name of Jesus sing that healing there is healing and it's in the name of Jesus there is healing in the name of Jesus There's 
victory. Yes, there's victory, and it's in the name of Jesus. There is victory, and it's in the name of Jesus. There is victory, and it's in the name of Jesus. He breaks every chain. 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 Hallelujah. 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 A name that is a light to lighten our way. A name that is a light that brightens every day. A name above every other name. It's to that name we come today and praise and adore. It's that name that we lift up on high. It's that name. Oh, that is the way maker, the promise keeper, that light 